One day the trumpet will sound for His coming. One day the skies with His glory will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing. My Savior Jesus is mine. Buried, he carried my sins for all Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming. One more hymn, if you will. Turn to hit 611. 611. a child I was helpless alone then I met the master now I am one of 
his home. For all things were changed when he found me. A new day broke through all around me. For I met the Master. Now I belong to Like a blind man who walks in the darkness I had longed, I had searched for the light Then I met the Master Now I walk no more in the night for all things were changed when he found me. A new day broke through all around me. For I met the Master. Now I changed when he found me a new day broke through all around me for I met the master now I belong to him now I Thank you, Shelby. Oof. Do you remember the day you met the Master? Wow. Cool. Have you ever found yourself in life where you needed help? <laughs> so that's a silly question. I, I would be shocked if there's anybody in the room this morning that found themselves in life where they didn't need help at some point in time. Uh, I, I, I get interested in words sometimes. I want to make sure that I fully understand what the word really means. And so I looked up the definition of the word help, and I want you to listen to, to the definition. This is what it says. The dictionary says this. It says, to give or provide what is necessary to accomplish a task or satisfy a need to contribute strength or means to, to render assistance, to cooperate effectively with, to aid, to assist, to save, to rescue, to make easier or less difficult, to contribute to, to facilitate, to be useful or profitable to, to relieve someone in need, sickness, pain, or distress. Now, I have to tell you, that's a pretty good definition when you stop and think about it, especially with where we're going with it this morning. Because the Bible tells us who our help is, doesn't it? How many of you have been into a, a, gone into a store recently where you walked in and and, and immediately they say, they call out the name of the store or they, 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 they recognize you as you come in or they come up to you and say, can I help you? What's your response? <laughs> Just looking. No thank you. 
uh, I'll, I'll, get in, I'll find you if I need you. Those, is, that, is that common or is that just me? Is that common? Okay, I, I, I didn't want to assume that that was true, but I, I felt that it was because why is it? You know, well, you know, one reason is we think everybody works on commission when you walk in. And they're going to pressure you to do something, to buy something that you didn't want when you came in to begin with. Unless it's a restaurant, yeah. <laughs> you want them to help you find a seat, don't you? You don't want to stand in line. Well, you know, the truth is, you know, I want to ask you this question. If God says this to you today, can I help you? Would you be, be willing to say yes? Because I believe he's asking. This morning we're looking at Psalm 121, if you've got your Bible. 121st Psalm reminds people that God is our help. Psalm 121. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the psalm. The psalm is maybe in your Bible, if you look at the top right underneath the Psalm 121, it, gives you, it tells you, in my Bible it actually makes this statement, it says, a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. Now this is not the pilgrims that we dress up like in November in grade school and do all the performances and plays, Thanksgiving plays. But it's, it's another version, it might say it was a song of ascent. It was literally, what I'm about to read is a song that was sung in the journey from home to the temple in Jerusalem. And it's a song that applies to our lives as is with the understanding that our life is a journey. And we need God's help and we need God's protection. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Our help comes from the Maker of heaven and earth. Think about it. Today there's a lot of folks who who go about and they, they act as if they worship the creation that God put on this planet. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying what God has created. But think about it. <laughs> Why would you want to settle for worshiping that which has been created in place of that which created it all? We can enjoy the beauty of the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that God has put in place. But we want to put our trust in the Creator, not the things that have been created. Listen to what the Lord said to the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 40, verse 25 and 26. He says, To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these? Think about it. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them by name because of his great power, his mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Now, I, I love living out here. And one of the great things about living out here and, and, and is we have... I think we have the world's most beautiful sunsets right out here behind the church. But I also love it when it's dark at night, the lights 
uh, when I, you find a spot where there's no street lights, and you walk outside and, the, and there's no clouds in the sky, and you look up into the heavens, and you see the vast number of stars. And it's, it's amazing to stop and to think about it. Did you know that scientists say that you and I can, any point, any position on the earth, that on any given time when the clouds are clear, that the most stars that we can see visibly with the naked eye is about 7,000 stars. Looks like a whole lot more than that, doesn't it? We can see 7,000 stars. And truthfully, we can, in standing in one spot, we can only really see about 3,000 of those 7,000 that are visible to the earth. But do you know how many stars make up our galaxy? Say, if you'd known we were going to have a science test, you'd have studied, wouldn't you? Well, (laughs) the truth is there's about 100 billion stars in Earth's galaxy. Now, try to get your mind wrapped around that. Think about it. Suppose all of these stars, these 100 billion stars were divided up and they were given to the 6.9 billion inhabitants of the planet Earth. Think about it. How many stars would you personally own if you were given a fair share and it was divided up between 6.9 billion people on the Earth? Let me tell you, you'd have one trillion stars that would be yours. You say, well, that's just numbers. But I'm telling you, they're big numbers. They're big numbers. One trillion stars would be yours and mine. There, and here's what even makes it bigger. That's just our galaxy. Just the galaxy of, of the, where the earth is situated. There, they, they say there's about 100 billion other galaxies that are known to exist in the heavens. Now let's talk about God. Stars are huge. Stars are huge. Earth is big, but a star is five times bigger than the earth. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God's bigger than that. God is so much bigger than that. Think about it. God made the heavens and the earth. Now, I want you to stop and focus for just a minute. Just a minute. Just, I want you to take a glimpse at some of the problems that you're dealing with in life. Some of the issues that confront you that you're going to wake up to tomorrow. Okay? All right, now let it go. Come back. I want to ask you this. Isn't a God who can create all that we've just described so much bigger than the problems that you have that lie before you? He is. When you put it in in uh, a a perspective of of one who is the maker of heaven and earth, the one who can help us must be greater than us, stronger than us, and wiser than us. We need to cry out to God. We need to cry out to God because He's our source of help. He's our help. God's asking you this morning, can I help you? I'm just looking. Now, I'll get with you when I need you. The psalmist says in verse 3, he says that he will not let your foot slip. It says, actually, he says, he will not let you stumble. You see, the journey that we're on in this life is a difficult one. The walk is for many days. Verses 3, the last part of verse 3 through 6, he says, Indeed, he who watches over you will not slumber. He will not sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Watches over you. You you realize that that it's 
what's stated in this psalm. There are eight verses to the psalm, and there are five times that it's stated that God watches over you. How does it make you feel? The creator of all that we've described watches over you. He's always with us. The psalmist emphasizes the fact that God is with His people. When they start a journey from home, on the road, when they reach Jerusalem, they're reminding themselves through singing this song over and over again that God is with them. God watches over them. And the same thing is true for you and me as we journey through life. And then we come to song, the seventh and eighth verse. It says, the Lord, it says, The Lord will keep you from all harm, and He watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. God protects us from evil. Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God is true to His Word. When we ask Him, there's the key. That's the key. When we ask Him, Lead us not into temptation. Guess what God does? Just what you ask. He gives you a way out when temptation comes your way. So when we encounter a problem and, and we're hurt, it's not because God has deserted us, because the Scripture says that, he is, that He's not sleeping, that He knows our problem. So why is it that we suffer today the way we do? Why is it we take on the, 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 the problems of life so that they, <laughs> they detract us from our focus on the things of God? You see, God hasn't deserted us. We've deserted Him. We didn't rely on God as our source of help. We looked to our source of help from those around us, from friends, from family. We rely upon ourselves. We don't ask God for help. James chapter 4 verse 2 says, We do not have because we do not ask God. I heard of people who said that they don't want to trouble God. They don't want to trouble God. He has enough to do. I've heard that. He's big enough to handle whatever you got. His shoulders are bigger than your shoulders. He's stronger than your, your strength. Our problem is, is that we think that God's too busy, and the truth is we're too busy for God. Because we're looking for solutions to life's problems instead of turning to Him. We're trying to solve it ourselves. Another reason that we suffer today as we do is that we do wrong. We sin. And our mistakes bring about suffering. And, but God has made a provision for that, hasn't He? God has told us that if we confess our sins, that He's faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that one way of crying out for help? Oh God, forgive me for what I've done. That's a, a cry of help. And God responds. God knows all about life. God knows what your needs are. God says man had sinned and he made a way to take care of that sin, didn't he? He made that through Jesus Christ. His one and only Son. Jesus has settled the sin problem for all who would receive him. He came and he died on the cross for our sin. We need God's help. 
We need God to save us. There are times when we do the right things, but yet we still face problems. I'm telling you this morning, it's not because God has forgotten you, because He's not. Scripture makes it very plain that He's with you wherever you'll go. That He'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's not because God has forgotten you. He's watching over you even in the midst of your difficulties. Think about it. As a child of God, as God is watching over you, you're facing all the problems in life and you focus your attention on the circumstances around you instead of focusing your heart and your mind and your soul on who the Creator is and who God is in you and the help that He offers. Even in the midst of our eyes being down here and God being up here, God still watches over you and walks you through the problems. You can walk through them in peace. You can walk through them in His strength and not your own. You see, God has a purpose. Oftentimes we don't understand. Has God ever asked you to do something that just didn't make sense? He has me. It didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to the people around me. But can I tell you, when I got on the back side of it, isn't that the way life is, though? Hindsight is always better. Could look back and see how God used where I walked to grow me and draw me closer to Him. You see, the promise here in the psalm here talks about God as our protection. I think it's the New King James Version says that God will preserve us. He protects us, yes, but it's the preservation in the midst of the troubles that God provides. He's willing to walk us through the storms as we face them. God will protect us and keep us safe through them. Now, I want to, I want to give you just a few things this morning that are just some keys to what I think are how do we receive, how do we access, and how do we accept God's help? First and foremost, you've got to realize who God is and who you are. Who God is. We've already talked about who God is this morning. God is creator. God is, is bigger than, he's the maker of heaven and earth. Now, that's, that's the, the big scope of who God is. You want to see the... Uh, here the, uh, the scope of how, how detailed God is, is in Psalm 139. He says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Who better to get help from? From not just the maker of heaven and earth, but the maker of your life. The creator of who you are. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He put you together. God is so big, but God is so personal. He's calling out to you this morning. He's saying, can I help you? Can I help you? And that first step of Accepting and receiving, accessing that help from God is recognizing who you are and who He is. Psalm 54, 4 says, Behold, God is my helper. That's who God is. God is your helper. Psalm 40, verse 17 says, defines who we are. He says, But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, oh my God. So understanding who, that God offers His help to you in your life and what you're facing today and tomorrow and the next day. And understanding 
just as the psalmist said there, that I am poor and needy. God, I need you. Leads me to the second thing you've got to do in order to accept and embrace and receive God's help is you've got to ask. You've got to ask. How do you ask God for help? Can I tell you? Can I give you one word? Right, let me give you two words. I give, let me give you the one word first. Jesus. Just call out the name Jesus. And if you want to throw in help me, <laughs> that's good. You see, it says here, it says in, uh, let's see. It says in Psalm 124.8, it says that God can provide that help. It says, our help is in the name of the Lord. Jesus, Father, God, help me. You've got to ask. You've got to understand who you are and who He is. And can I tell you, here's the third thing, and it's the hardest thing in the world for us to do. you got to wait. you got to wait. Because the answer doesn't always come immediately when you cry out. There may be something that God is teaching us as He walks us through. But you've got to wait on the Lord. Psalm 63, 7 says, Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. Psalm 33, 20 says, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. So what happens in those times where we don't seek God's help? Psalm 94, 17 says, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. Those times where we don't seek God's help, we settle for less than what God desires for us. So I'm telling you this morning, do not settle for less than God. God offers His help to you. Can I tell you, the, the form of His help comes in this. It comes in His presence. The presence of God walking through your life. The Bible says you draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. He told Joshua that he would never leave him, never forsake him. He says, do not fear. <laughs> be courageous. Do not be afraid. For I'm with you wherever you go. That's true to you and true to me. Because our greatest troubles, our, 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 our greatest needs in life, where we need the help of God, come in the form of troubles around us and fear of what might happen. God says, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Trust in me. God's saying, Can I help you? How are you going to respond today? Father, thank you, Lord God, for what you have shown us through your word today. Lord, thank you for being our help in times past. But God, right now, I know there are people in this room who crying out right now for your help. They need your help, Father. They've, they've been crying for your help. But Lord, they're at that stage of waiting. And Lord, I pray that you would speak peace and comfort into their spirit today. And remind them that you have heard them and that you are acting. And that in your time, Father, the resolution that you desire will be put in place. Father, there are others this morning who have tried to live this life under their own strength, under their own power, under their own will. But Lord, I pray that they recognize today that as you speak 
the words of can I help you? Lord, they're not putting you out, putting trouble on you, Father, that you have a desire to be in their life, active in their life. Father, there's others here this morning that may not know you as Lord and Savior. God, they, they have a head knowledge of who you are, but Lord, they've never understood in their heart who you desire for them to become. So Lord, I ask that the presence of your Spirit would move in this moment and speak to the hearts and minds and soul of your people and draw them to yourself. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you turn to Hymn 692. Be not dismayed.